All right, you're listening to Late Night with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide and Shay Samuels. She's coming right up. She's awoke. She's ready to get this show on. The road. I hope everybody had a great Monday, though. I know Mondays could be tough. Yeah, man. Batman was grinding today. Yeah, man. Working nonstop. Right. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, y'all, in this world. You got to pay them bills. All right, let's talk to Shay. Speaking of bills, she owe me some money. <laughs> What's up, Shay Sam? What's up? Hey, Gary. Hey, Fly. Well, my it's an angel, man. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. How you doing? I'm better. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to give you, give you some clapping. Could you just give me a round of applause? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You made it through. Yeah, you sound like you was about to I made call it, it quits for the night on the Batman. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. It's Monday. It's Monday. But, you know, I'm, I'm always going to pull through. I'm always going to pull through. It's Monday. You know, we have a lot of amazing people um, wanting to come on through on Monday. So I wanted to get on and, and greet our special guest. So And also to, to get a chance to talk with you. Mondays come by fast, So I mean, I feel like... I was just, you know, there. I was like, well, that was like my one week anniversary Friday Red Room. <laughs> it was like Friday already again. Yeah, no, man. <laughs> and now right. it's Monday again. Yeah, almost time to release those new shows, man. We we going right through the first ones already. Well, you know, we 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 gonna be looking at um, uh, the cab Comcast has started airing them uh, last Thursday, so that that should be your first night episode Shout one. Shout out to the cab yeah. County. That's right. So people look for that show this Thursday, uh, right before my journey with Paula G. So that's a that's a super lineup right there. Yeah, I love it. That is. Shout out to Paula G. Lady Wisdom after midnight. Yeah, man. What's that? I think it starts at ten thirty. Is that right? I always get the times mm-hmm. messed mm-hmm. up. Yeah, and then you got uh, oh, oh, uh MVP Sky back in the studio doing her thing. She's been shooting two shows per week. About to push her to four. <laughs> Make her work. When did she go back to school? The end of the month. The end of the month. Wow. I know. Wow. That, see, that went by fast too. I know. We've been so spending like a lot of time. got home and you working her. I know. Well, we've been spending a lot of time together. She's been in the gym. She she used to it. She's been in the gym putting in 30 minutes to an hour per night. In fact, we're going right after the show. Yeah. She, she getting wow. in. Wow. Yeah. She's excited. She's been happy. She can pull it off. You know, she can pull it off. Yeah, we're gonna have to try to do a a week a weekend. But mommy had us out shopping this weekend for back to school, and that was fun. You know, uh-huh. hanging out with them Sunday. You know, hitting the mall, so that was cool. Uh-huh. So um, yeah, we had a great time. It was beautiful weather here in Maryland too. So you missed it, real nice. Yeah, well, I will tell you. I will tell you. It's it's been humid. It has been humid. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it feels like there, but it's been humid. Nah. It was humid when I was there. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was bad I when you were here. Place. Yeah, it was bad. But it's great now. <laughs> I, I went to a new place, um, Harriman's Grill. Where in Maryland? Have you heard of that place? Was, yes. Mm, was that downtown? No, it was right up. It was off of um, Race Sister. You know, I never can say that. Rister Town, Rister Town. Oh, Rister Town. Oh, it was off of Rister Town. Really? It's near you. Yes, yeah. It was called Lahari's Grill. I'm gonna look that Harryman's up. Harryman's Grill. Okay, I'm gonna look that up because you're probably saying it wrong. <laughs> or probably... It's H A R R M A N Grill. All right, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna go check it out. All right. All right. You let me know. Well, you got past the. John Paul McGee, he comes right out of, actually, he's from Baltimore, but he's passionate in, in Georgia. He has some music out. He has a book out. So it's going to be a very interesting interview with you guys. I'm going I'm, I'm, yeah, to wait to sit back. Wait to meet him. Yeah, I'm actually working on a movie while you while you guys have been interviewing today. We had a great lineup today. You know, you know, Rhea didn't have a guest today, but she just went ahead and ministered to the people. And then she was a guest on Lakeisha's show. Uh, that was awesome. That was a real powerful show. I love that. I love 
Summer, we can do that. I keep talking about recyclable talent. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. We, can, we don't have an interview. We just interview one another. Shout out to Ree and Lakeisha. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You guys you guys are going to have to, um, I'm going to have to get, you, get Lakeisha on your show because the healing conference is coming up. Uh, and I got to save some time for her so she could talk about it because she didn't even mention it today. She was so excited to have Ree on. But her healing conference is uh, scheduled for uh, September 21st. I get my day straight. Right mm-hmm. in Centerville. I know a lot of them listen to the show now. So that'd be in Centerville at the Kenard Cultural Center. It used to be one of the only high schools African Americans could attend. And uh, I believe that's I believe that's Kent County. It could be Queensland. I get them all confused. But um that was wow. one of the only yeah, and they rented uh, one of, a guy from Baltimore, matter of fact. Shout out to Mr. Clay Matthew. He actually raised over a million dollars and restored that building. And now it's a museum. And the cultural center, wow. they have a lot of events there. So we're going to be hosting uh, Lakeisha's uh, conference, it's going to be the healing conference, along with having entertainers. Norris uh, Williams is going to be here. You guys seen him on Impact uh, with Dr. Bobby Jones. He's going to be here. And we're looking to get Ty Bowden, and we're waiting to bring Simonic Praise back. And um, so it's going to be awesome. Yeah, we get some food up in there. So uh, get y'all <laughs> tickets. It's on Eventbrite. Can't forget the food. That's right. And also, Leroy Allen. You know Leroy. Leroy's going to be one of the speakers. Yep. yep. So we're still working on a, the lineup for the speakers. And then on the 28th, we're going to be introducing Merlin Gospel Live. That's right. Merlin Gospel Live is going to wow. be a... I decided to make that a television series because... I got so many phone calls and em- emails about it. I was like, wait a minute. You know, I was trying to just work it up to get some auditions, look for some some unknown groups, you know, and then I was going to have a big <laughs> production in May. But now since I'm getting hit like this, I said, shoot. I mean, when you start getting phone calls, <laughs> you got you to gotta, you gotta revisit yeah. the vision. So God put on my yeah. heart today. He said, make that a television. So you got a television station. You can do what you want. <laughs> I was like, you're right. Yeah, you're right, that's God. about right. Sounds about right to me. That's right. So um, that's what we're going to do. So Merlin Gospel Live is going to be available for people living in Delmarva. So, um, you know, of course, you got to reserve. You have to register through Eventbrite because we can't have all those people up in there trying to get the performance on in five hours. So we're trying to, you know, Batman trying to be organized. <laughs> That's right. I don't want to make nobody mad like the last time. I mean, forget about people. You know, be quiet. I forget about you. You got you to gotta get in my face. It's my turn. You know? So anyway. You just be working. I know. You know. I, I'm going to defend you on that yeah. one. You just be working. Yeah, you know the deal. You, you've been with me several times. You you know, I'm just trying to get the job <laughs> done right. So, so when they go on the air, people can't say, well, what happened to the sound? <laughs> like, you was bugging me. <laughs> I lost my focus. <laughs> It's your fault. So I don't want to point the finger at nobody. So sometimes I do ignore people. And um, Shay told you. Uh, some, sometimes, you know. sometimes it's more than likely that you will be ignored, but it's not intentionally. That's right. It's not intentional. You heard You heard it from me. And your mom was really cool. I thought, I thought Lisa was going to be messing with me on the set, but she was real cool. I forgot she was here. <laughs> I... I actually prepped her beforehand because she was going to. Oh, so okay. I prepped I prepped her beforehand. Notice she no I have to watch her interview too because I couldn't stop I couldn't stop laughing. She you was know funny. She, was, she was actually joking, right? She was funny, man. She was cracking me up. You throughout know, the I, whole throughout the whole interview she was joking and I just couldn't I couldn't stop laughing. But we launched that, you know, that's on social media. So that was funny. I saw it. I saw it. I just have to, I just have to, I've been, I've been off and on, but I'm going to, um, I saw it. So I have to brace myself, but I prepared her all the way down there. I prepared her and I said, Jerry, you cannot mess with Jerry. You can't just be screaming out. Can I can feel the power. She, can, uh, she has to sit in the corner That's right. and behave. Yeah, she did a good and you job, see what though. she did? That's right. Got you ready. You know, we, everything was so timely. You know, great guests. So I can't <laughs> wait to add up between your show and Lakeisha. You know, Lakeisha got a whole bunch of new shows, too. And Paula got a new shows. So it's been an exciting time being in the editing room. Got a lot of new shows. Yeah. You know, interesting. Because I never really listened to you guys when y'all talk. I'm just making sure, you know, everything is straight. And, of course, Jordan is paying attention. To uh-huh. and, you know, but I always got to, you know, we you know we check on each other. But, look, let's bring your guests yeah. on. You know, you and I could talk forever. So let's bring your guests on. And I want to say hi to, what's up, Pastor? Pastor Paul, how you doing, sir? Pastor McGee? Hey, everybody. I'm doing well, sir. How are you, sir and ma'am? It's good to be on with you all tonight. Thank you, sir. I just How wanna, are you? Yeah, I just wanted to holler at you real quick because um, 
I heard you from Baltimore, and, you know, we homeboys and everything, so I just want to holler at you real quick before I let uh, Shay conduct your interview. Amen? Absolutely, man. I am from Baltimore. I was raised there. Um, my upbringing was a combination between Baltimore City and Baltimore County. My grandmother, uh, God rest her soul, she lived on the east side of Baltimore, mm -hmm. uh, right there between Biddle and Chase Street. Yeah, yeah, I know that. My first few years of elementary school at Elmer A. Henderson, which is number 101 over mm -hmm. there on Wolf Street. I was raised in New Friendship Baptist Church on Eager Street, right there in what they call Church Square. Yeah, yeah. And my mom lived out in Owings Mills, Maryland. So I'm familiar with Rice's Town Road. Y'all was just talking about Rice's Town Road yeah, a few minutes ago. that's right. So I'm familiar oh, with the county being right. in Owings Mills and went to uh, Sudbrook Middle School, Baltimore School for the Arts for High School. Same school my kids uh, went to. my city. I love it. Yeah, same school my kids went to. All day long. That's Brad's right. All day long. That's right. So you must have been there for music or you was there for uh, world language in Subbrook. I was at Baltimore School for the Arts for music. All right. Okay. So we got yeah, some talent. All right. Well, we heard your, your yes, score, sir. man. It was it was excellent. We, we was loving it. So hey, thank um, you. So we hope to thank meet you. you. So Pastor, we hope to meet you. Your next visit here, you know, I was talking to your admin and we're going to try to make that happen. And, um, you know, God We'd speed. We'd love to make that happen. I think I'm there. There in a couple of weeks, like September the 15th. I yes, think sir. I'm yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So we got to get together. All right. Well, look, you and Shay have That's a great you. interview. I am Ray here. If you guys need me, have a great interview. God bless. God bless you, man. Thank you. Well, welcome, 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 welcome. Once again, it's Monday and you are again with Jerry Royce Live Rope Live, a.k.a. The Batman. He's in Charm City and I'm with him. Shay Samuels, your co-host for tonight. And we are joined by an amazing, we have a lot of amazing guests. We have a lot of ama amazing artists, authors, um, motivational speakers, uh, um, life coach strategists. We have a lot of people who come through on the Late Night Jerry Voice Live Worldwide, a.k.a. The Batman Show. And tonight we're going to introduce to you, some of you probably know him, and some of you may not, because we are international. You get an opportunity to meet for the first time, maybe. Um, our guest, and so I'm going to uh, allow him to introduce himself, and we're going to get into some questions from what I can see, very phenomenal in all that he does, and so I can't wait to dig into this interview. So, Pastor John Paul McGee, how are you? All is well. God bless you. Thank you so much for, for having me on this Jerry Royce show. I'm looking forward to our conversation this evening. Um, Baltimore native, um, now living between Atlanta, Georgia, and in Daytona Beach, Florida, pastoring a wonderful church there in Daytona Beach, the Hope Fellowship Church, and here in school in Atlanta, Georgia, at the ITC, doing my doctor of ministry degree. Um, it's just an amazing time, and God has blessed me in this last month or so to release my first ever published book and to release a CD to go along with it. And so thank you so much for your amazing compliments. I strive to do all things in excellence. I'm just glad that the Lord is using me for such a time as this. So I'm excited to be on with you tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I, you know what? It's interesting that you said a book and a CD all coming out at once. And we have to be very creative and innovative. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're not in competition, but at time we're in a competitive environment. Yes. <laughs> we're in a very competitive yes. environment. So marketing is everything. Strategy is everything. Everything that we do, That's everything right. that we do has to capture the eye of those that we're seeking out. So um, yes. I want to hear more about it so what gave you the idea to um you know just be that creative a book and a cd coming out not feeling intimidated by one or the other so you had to be very that was a bold move so how did you come about a book and a cd being released at the same time well you know one of the things i tell people all the time is that god expects a 100 percent in return on investment and in whatever has been placed on the inside of us and i think that um there are a lot of people who hide their light under a bushel. And one of the things that I'm seeking to do um, in this particular season of my life is to put all my cards on the table. And so I spent uh, the, the vast majority of my life in uh, gospel music ministry. I uh, spent the last several years, decade or so, uh, in the gospel music industry. I'm also a classically and jazz trained musician, um, but also a preacher pastor um, and an academic person who has 
taught graduate school and now is in the doctoral degree program. And so one of the things I've been asking God to help me do is to uh, put something in the earth that is tangible and that leaves a deposit and a legacy that provides a consistent impartation for people to not only to experience God, but to experience what God has placed in me. And so back in 2017, I had an idea to write a book. Um, I did a 31-day prayer call where I did every day praying about a certain area of people's lives where we need to elevate. The title of the book is Elevate. And so after I did that, I told everybody on the call, I said, listen, in about 90 days, I'll have a book for you. 90 days turned into two years. But at the beginning of July, uh, when I really started to dig into finishing this, um, I thought about this whole devotional nature of the of the writing and the fact that when persons are trying to really encounter the holy, to really engage divine spaces, what else better to accompany the reading than music? And so I was able to sit at the piano and play tunes, play songs that correspond with every day of this 21-day devotional. Mm -hmm. so that when people go into this experience, it's a holistic experience that involves and envelops the entirety of a person, the mind, the body, the soul, the spirit, the ear. It's a multisensorial experience, which is what I was going after. And so uh, many persons came to me and said, well, you know, that's such an innovative, uh, ingenious idea. And I really wasn't even trying to go after it for that purpose. I was really <laughs> just trying to make sure that people were able to have a complete experience and to experience the power, the soothing power of music, along with uh, the edifying power of the written word. Amen. You know, um, as a worshiper myself, I know that there are times where um, I was, I just did it today, um, where I had to, I, mean, I was listening to my song, but I was listening to it from a perspective of just um, re-recording it. And mm. when I say that I was listening, but it touched me in a way where it was like, I I needed that right now. <laughs> yeah. Like mm -hmm. I needed, I needed that right now. And so a combination yeah. of your book and your music, you know, you're creating, like you said, an encounter, an atmosphere of worship while reading the book. And, yeah. um, you know, my partner and I, we talk about this a lot because, um, and I'm, I'm going to ask you this because I want people to understand that there's a difference because we have gotten to this theatrical part of ministry. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. is theatrical. And so explain the difference between, between, you know, the theatrics um, that we're being presented with now and the encounter that you're, you're hoping, praying that people are going to get from your book and CD? Well, you know, I think that one of the immediate things that jumps out to me in this experience is right now it's a CD and not a DVD. So mm -hmm. uh, when people are listening to it, they don't, if they don't know who I am, they can't see a face, they can't mm -hmm. see an expression. All they can do is encounter the sound. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, I believe in this modern church um, that we become enamored with sight um, yeah. and we become enamored with the, uh, the allure of what we're able to perceive by what we're looking at and not necessarily the sound. As we study scripture, even in Genesis, the first chapter, uh, we find sound. It says, and the spirit hovered. What else mm -hmm. is hovering but a sound, a, a, a dynamic, uh, a, a sound uh, that that can only be expressed through uh, the power of, of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, there is a lot of entertainment uh, yeah. going on. And, and, and here's the thing, you know, I understand that every element as a trained performer, I realize that every element of artistry does have an, a, a, a dimension of performance and entertainment to it. And so it's really about the heart of the matter. Yes. Um, you know, the Bible says that the Lord is, seeking after persons who would be true worshipers, who would worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And so when I went into that studio to record those 21 instrumental songs, interestingly enough, um, I've done an instrumental CD before. I wanted to have some fully produced tracks with all the bells and whistles and multiple instruments playing at one time. But literally for this project, the Lord did not allow that to happen. I was trying to call. I could not make it happen. In order to <laughs> to I had to go into the studio, sit at the piano, and play the sound of heaven. And so over a period of two days, spending about four or five hours in the studio, I was able to get these 21 songs out. And I literally just sat and played it. God gave me utterance. 
And so I mm-hmm. really believe that that's what's going to reach the heart of the people because it came from the heart of God, straight from the heart and the mind of God to my fingers, through my heart. And now it's communicated as people are taking this 21-day journey to elevate their lives. And it corresponds with the message of that particular day. So that's the motive. That's what we're trying to have in, in, in yeah. this encounter. Yeah, and I thank you for explaining that because, you know, um, we have listeners from all over and people have mm-hmm. encountered the same thing. It's so repetitive, right? And so yeah. what I do like to pull out of the people that we're conversing with um, on this show is the difference, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there has to lie a difference somewhere, and yes. it's unfortunate because we all begin to look alike. Would you agree uh, with that? I, I you can speak on that. You can speak on that. You can speak on that. There's a lot of replication and duplication um, in the body of Christ, and I, I would rather be uh, a poor version of myself than the best mm-hmm. version of someone else. I tell you that mm-hmm. uh, because the reality of the matter is, is that God has created us to love and to exist in the skin that we're in. Um, and, you know, a lot of people trying to sing like this one, preach like that one, pray like the other, uh, when the reality is, is that God has given us all unique spaces and, and a yes. unique sound, a unique gift uh, to release in the earth that no one else can do except for us. And it was very interesting. I preached yesterday morning and I preached my voice completely out and I had to play, I had to minister at an evening service called of raising him, and we were singing hymns for uh, several hours, just kind of in old school form. And I didn't have any voice, and typically I would exhort, typically I would try to sing a little bit. But last night, the Lord really impressed upon me that my call was to sit at that organ and sit at that piano and play the sound of heaven. I didn't exhort, I didn't speak, I didn't sing. I did wow. what I needed to do in that moment because that was my assignment. And so I encourage even those who are listening to not uh, squelch or quench your gift because. As you look at what somebody else has, that whatever God has given us, it's enough. And I literally, I had to fight through that intimidation because writing a book is not something that I really saw myself doing. I didn't really feel like I had that much to say. Um, and then being an independent artist that's not necessarily signed to a label at this moment, you know, releasing uh, uh, music, it requires you to have a different type of grind if you really want your music yeah. to be a blessing to the people uh, yeah. all across the world. And so I've traveled internationally and nationally, but still. So it's a different season to grind. But when you trust what God has placed on the inside of you, when you trust the treasure that's on the earth, inside the earthen vessel that's in you, you will believe God that God will make sure that whatever you have gets to whoever needs to hear it. And so that's why I'm trusting and believing God to take this uh, ministry of Elevate all over the world just because I trust what he's placed in me. So let's talk about the the, the 12-year-old, mm-hmm. <laughs> Pastor McGee. Let's, yeah. let's, Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the twelve year old. So, um, from what I what I understand from your bio, you were twelve years old when you started preaching. Is that correct? I was twelve years old when I received my call to preach. When I heard okay. the Lord's voice, um, mm-hmm. they preach, and I called uh, one of my aunts. Uh, I called my aunt Missy, and I told her what I I called her before I even called told my mother. I told her what was going on. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Like I'm twelve. Uh, but, but that was when I really felt the impression of God to preach. I always knew, I, I, I not told this story, I, I believe, publicly um, on radio or television, but at five years old, I was in the front room of my grandmother's house, and I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, at the time, I didn't know what voice it was, but I heard the voice say to me, you belong to me. And I came to know that that was the voice of the Lord. And so um, at 12, I received my call to preach. My wound up telling my parents, told my pastor, pastor said, and wait a year or so. Let's see if your compulsion is still the same. And then at 14 years old, I preached my initial sermon with license to preach um, and have never since that day been without the opportunity and a space to preach in. Started my music career in church music at 12 years old, playing full time at Waters a and Church there in Baltimore off Asper Street and just kind of matriculated through music ministry to then winding up at GBT, was known as Great Bethlehem Temple, when Jonathan Nelson was the minister of music there, and Jason Nelson was playing the bass. Now Jason is a bishop, and Jonathan is a worldwide superstar. Both of them are superstars. It's just been amazing, the matriculation. But literally, uh, from an early age until now, I've seen the hand of God just navigating me in and through various unique spaces. Um, and, and it 
goes back to what you were saying about the difference. And mm-hmm. this, uh, there came a time where I had to become comfortable with being different, that I was yeah. not like everybody else, um, that my trajectory and my path was not the same as my friends. Um, or some of the other people in my age group. I didn't find entertaining what some of them found entertaining. Uh-huh. Um, I, you know, I, I was in, in a different league, and, and it's an isolated walk, and I believe that the Lord was preparing me for that, uh, to walk in spaces where I would not have um, a cheering squad all the time, but where yeah. I would have to be completely comfortable in just being me. Um, I was raised as, as an only child. Uh, in Baltimore, even though I had siblings on my father's side, I was not raised alongside them. And so it really provided a very interesting opportunity, especially not having any first cousin my age, to really get comfortable walking in who God has called me to be. And I'll never forget, I think I was 14 or 15, and I preached that water day and me one Sunday. The associate pastor there who's still in Baltimore, her name is Reverend Marietta Ramsey. She looked at my mother. She said, the best thing you can do for John is let him fly. She says, I know that you want to cover and protect. She said, but the best thing you can do for him is let him fly because God has him. I'll never forget that moment. And I've I've seen how God has kept me and lifted me and promoted me and challenged me and convicted me and even hurt and wounded me throughout this journey. Amen. You know, and I want to know, too, um, for because we do have a side of we, we want we want people to see the other side of. (laughs) <laughs> that mountain, right? But yeah. before that, there was there was some practical things that you know hobbies that we. I mean, what's your hobbies? Yeah. Like, what do you yeah. what do you like? <laughs> what's your passion? I mean, ministry is inside of us. So of course, I could be watching. I said it today. I could be watching SpongeBob and, and yep. some spiritual diamond will mm-hmm. come right, boom, right. So that's who we are naturally. But what are your hobbies? You know, um, music all in all is has become hobby ministry and career. So I love music, every form of it, probably minus punk rock and heavy metal and some of the profane stuff that we hear, but I love music. Um, some of the other things, let's see some of the other hobbies. I like to cook, whether you, whether people believe it or not. You sound I like a Facebook chef. Life, that's that's I, why I was asking. You sound like a chef. <laughs> I love to cook. I'm telling you, and whether you believe it or not, I can throw down. I just don't tell people that because then they, you know, people start asking you to do stuff. But, you know, I love to cook. I find that that's another area where I can express myself creatively yes. uh, without judgment. You know, the food don't talk back to you until you eat it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I love to do that. Um, let's see, hobbies. Um, I actually enjoy fishing as well. Wow. I, I okay. Really Enjoy fishing, and, and part of that is just the peaceful environment. is very serene. You know, yeah. I'm not always, you know, I'm I'm really an inside cat, so like always touching the fish and everything. I'm not really into that, but I really. <laughs> You're I like enjoy. me. I like eating crab, but I ain't picking them. Somebody got to pick the meat out for me in order for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I enjoy that. I enjoy fine dining. I enjoy traveling. You know, I I believe in self care. So yeah. you know the way my my life is set up. I gotta go on a beach somewhere at least once every two to three months and just woosah. Yeah, so, and that's why I ask yeah, because we get so we get so wrapped up in the day to day. There's not one thing that God doesn't know need, need that needs to be done, right? And so, that's right. in the ministry, we get so caught up and we gotta clear every corner of our lives okay. to you know, well, we gotta do this. Are we if I don't do this, we gotta do that. And we realize, you know, I said it a while ago, but if it's something that God wants to happen, it's going to happen even when we're asleep. He's already working Mm -hmm. the things out behind the scenes, so we do have to practice self-care in between all of the music making, the book writing, um, for actors and actresses in the kingdom. There's not Mm -hmm. one self-care. Go out. If you don't get, you know, he just said it. I I like the fish, but I ain't going to touch this. the fish. (laughs) Take somebody with you that's going to take the fish off the hook. And teamwork, right. <laughs> teamwork that thing out. But self care right. is important because we can. And I want you to speak to this. Has there been a time where you just been so overwhelmed with everything that you're trying to complete that you just felt like I'm just this is not for me? Yes, I I've been I visited that season of wanting to give up out of 
I'm overwhelmed more times than I would like to admit. And one of the things I had to realize, and I encourage others to realize, uh, particularly those who are in pastoral ministry, is that if we die on Saturday night, someone is going to be in that pulpit preaching on Sunday morning. And because the reality of the matter is that the way that God has set up his church is that um, he said, upon the rock of truth, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so Jesus died for the church. He's not requesting that we die the same way that he did for the work of the ministry. And so there are actually two chapters in my book. One is Elevate Your Health, and the other one is Elevate Your Recreation. Because I wanted people to understand that, number one, when it comes to your health, you know, your body is not going to take care of itself for you. So I go to the gym. You know, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with everybody. I slacked off over the last week and a half, but I'm typically in the gym three or four days a week, and two of those days, I'm there twice a day because I believe in keeping the temple well. If you keep your temple physically well, it also helps your mental and your emotional health. Um, also, I've taken, to, I've taken to task the fact that I read in the book where you're only really supposed to work on any particular task for 60 minutes at a time and then take a 10-minute break just to let your mind rest, you know, change your posture, and then elevate your recreation. Go to a concert. Go to the beach. Travel somewhere. Go see a Broadway play. Enjoy this world that God has given. There is so much available for us in the earth, and I know everybody's on different financial levels, but save up for something special if you have to do that. But enjoy your life. If all a person does is church, home, and work, that ain't really living. You know, it take a walk, go to a park, just enjoy being in the earth outside of what you do. And that's been one of the big things for me, you know, um, being in ministry so long, I feel like, I felt like at times, and still sometimes feel like, that people don't understand that there's a person underneath this, uh, underneath the title. There's a person that's sitting behind this piano and this organ. Um, and that person is who I want you to know, not necessarily my gift. And so, yes, it is very important that we mercilessly defend the necessity of taking care of ourselves. I believe that. Hello, did I lose you? No, she's still she's still there, Pastor. <laughs> she might have put herself on me. <laughs> I'm just talking. I was like, that's so good that you said that. <laughs> you and me. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> I've, I've heard you to, I heard you to the very end. I was saying that was really good that you said that. We're actually going to go to one of your songs, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Um, wow. Tell us a little bit. And, I, and I, I did choose Sweet Hour of Prayer for a reason, because you talked about the book and how um, and I don't know if this is one of the songs that's going to coincide with the book, but but I'm, I'm, oh, see, <laughs> it is. But I want this to tie into you telling us about the book. So we're going to go to Sweet Hour of Prayer, and when we come back on the other side of the break, I want you to tell us a little bit about um, the song, but then also the correlation of it to the book. So if Absolutely. you can introduce your song to the listening audience and to the Facebook um, viewers. Well, God bless you, everyone. This is Sweet Hour of Prayer. It coincides with the chapter in my book entitled Elevate Your Prayer Life. It's one of my favorite hymns. Um, so be blessed as you listen to the sound of me at the piano, Sweet Hour of Prayer. You're listening to Junior Sound Worldwide Podcast.
Wow. Wow. I don't know if you can see, um, <laughs> shout out to the Facebook viewers who are like, who is that playing <laughs> the piano? Who is the pianist? <laughs> wow. So, so if you're just joining and you were not able to hear the other side of our conversation, um, I'm with Pastor John Paul McGee, and that you just heard was one of the songs of um, on the CD that will accompany his book. And so I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the book, but also how the the song that we just heard coincides. Is it a specific chapter? It is. Okay. Uh, the, the structure of the book is that every chapter has a song that coincides with the message of the book. And so this particular uh, chapter, Elevate Your Prayer Life, I, I make a statement, and I'll just read the one sentence. And the statement is, prayer is your anchor and your forklift. That prayer is your anchor and your forklift. Prayer will settle you. Um, but not only will prayer settle you amidst of whatever's going on around you, but prayer is also your forklift. As you pray, it does the work of lifting you and ascending you into a certain place in God where the cares of this life no longer can encumber you. Uh, um, the power of the enemy can no longer provoke you. But when you spend time with God in prayer, it lifts you to heights that cannot be explained. And so uh, Sweet Hour Prayer happens to be one of my very favorite hymns. Um, and it was written uh, by a blind preacher who really felt that prayer was a private enterprise, but he wrote this poem and he wound up going to another person who was musically inclined and saying to them, hey, can you add music to my poem? I believe that this needs to be heard. The interesting thing about it is that the, the, the lyricist died before he ever heard the music uh, attached to his poem. But verse one, so he says, sweet hour prayer, sweet hour prayer that calls me from this word of care and bids me at my father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul is often found relief and often escape the tempter snare by thy return sweet hour prayer it really just talks about our ability truly to cast our cares upon the lord and to release whatever we need to release and to receive whatever we need to receive in the presence of an almighty god who cares for us who's there for us who promised that he would be a very present help and one of the things even as a preacher um, that I have to remind myself is I should be praying more than I'm worrying. I should be praying more than I'm fretting. I should be praying when I get angry. I should be praying when I'm happy. That prayer is really that which uh, promotes a healthy existence in this world. I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm just thinking um, maybe that's why I've just been like so built up with everything outside of I haven't I haven't really been in that prayer closet for in a minute. <laughs> you know, I yeah. do my and now now I lay me down to sleep prayers and my, you know, Lord I thank you for this morning, but that soaking prayer and that's exactly where um that took me. I'm um, just listening to the song just listening to the piano play. Um one of the viewers actually said you're very patient. So I I'm sure this is another musician to a musician, wow. but he said you're very patient, and he heard that just in the playing. Wow. <laughs> wow. So I want you guys, so when, when the, the book is available now, right? Yes, the book is available now. Uh, you can go to my website, www.johnpaulmcgee.com. Again, that's www.johnpaulmcgee.com, and you can order the book. You can order an e-book, and you can also order the companion CD that goes along with it. I encourage you, don't just get the book, but also get the CD. Soon the CD will be available for download online. Uh, more information will be um, given about that uh, on my website. Uh, but not only will it be available online, um, I'm also starting to work on an audio book uh, um, that I will actually read the chapters as the music softly plays in the background. Because not everybody wants to sit down and read, but many people will listen as they go to work. So and, and and that type of vibe. Do you offer counseling at all at any way in ministry? I do. I, I do offer spiritual guidance and mentoring. 
Um, I, st- I, I shy away from the use of the word counseling because that's a scientific term. Mm-hmm. And uh, for persons who are skilled in providing pastoral counseling license and the like, um, I, I don't have the license, but I, I am in a pastoral care and, and spiritual care cohort for my doctor of ministry degree. And I believe that the Lord has indeed anointed me to be able to help mentor and coach and help people through um, their life experiences. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, God is all knowing. So, yeah, so yeah. just wanted to <laughs> just wanted to put that out there too for those who are listening. Um, I do want to play. I do want to play one more um, one more song. We have we have a few minutes, so I'm gonna if you don't mind, I'm gonna play another one of your songs. Um, would love to. Let's see, which one would you like for us to play? I have two more. Oh my goodness! Uh, which which of the two do you have? Okay. Is one of them, I think. Hold on one second. Is there? Hold on. Let me let me get the songs out. Um, the way that they're coming to me, plan. Is that one of the songs? Go ahead and play that. Plan. Okay. So uh, we're going to go. Um, just give us a give us a brief. You know what? What are we about to hear? So now, if you, we've done one song, and you got everybody kind of like. You know, sitting by somebody's probably under their cover right now and just soaking. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's probably face down on the floor right now, soaking. So, plan. Tell us about plan before we play that one. I think you either have. I will trust in. I'm not sure which of the two. So once you once you play the next one, I'll be able to come back on the back end and say what it was. So let's be surprised and see what God has for us with whatever you press play on. All right, press play. You are listening to Gear Slide, the Worldwide Podcast.
Vegas and I'm from Haiti, but I live in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. <laughs> That is that's what you call old soul. <laughs> that was old soul there. That was I will trust in the Lord until I die. I wanted to kind of borrow from the sounds of the old school church with, you know, grandma and grandpa on that upright piano. You know, they ain't called it a piano, but they called it a piano back in the day where they opened up the top of the piano and they would be stomping on that uh sustained pedal and playing them bass notes and so I used that and merged it with my jazz training and kind of uh, sought after an Art Tatum, Oscar Peterson type of feel just to have a little fun with it and to remind people to trust in the Lord. You know, there's, there's a chapter in the book that's about elevating your faith and about uh, elevating your expectation. To, David says, you know, that his soul waits for the Lord and waits with expectation. Mm. Uh, Solomon said in Proverbs 3, to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to to our own understanding. So part of the interpretation of that is I didn't want people to hear when they hear the trust or when they think of trust or faith, I didn't want them to think of something slow and worshipful. I wanted them to think of something at a walking pace that literally as you're going through life, have fun trusting it. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some ups and downs. You're going to have some moments where you don't understand. There are going to be some slip-up moments. But keep the joy as you trust him. Trust him Mm -hmm. until you check up out of here. He's going to be God no matter what. Mm. I think it, I, I think, you know, people are going to get a lot. I know that people are going to get a lot out of the book. I know that people are going to get a lot out of the CD and I love how you, um, you've been entwined the two. So that again, that experience is definitely going to be more than just an experience, but an encounter. Um, for those yes. who are just joining again, please let them know where they can get the book, um, where they can get the book. It's available now. And how, you know, how you want to compile the two as a package and why. Yes, for those of you who are just joining us, you can find my brand new book, Elevate, on my website, www.johnpaulmcgee.com. Again, that's www.johnpaulmcgee.com. And it's a 21-day devotion, 21 days of reflection, prayer, and worship. So with each chapter, it comes with a song that is played on a companion CD. The companion CD is also available on the website. So as you go through each chapter, you'll have the scripture to study. You'll have the devotional reading. And in the devotional reading, I often share stories uh, that are personal and dear to me so that you can see that I've taken this journey and I continue to take the journey. Afterwards, uh, there's a prayer. Then after the prayer, there are several questions that you can ask and reflections that you can journal as to how you can make practical changes and adjustments to truly elevate in that particular area. And then and you seal the day by listening to the song. But goodness gracious, even I was blessed as I was listening to the song. So you don't have to uh, just save it for whatever. You can sit the CD in your car, in your CD player, for those of you who have CD players, and just play it all day around. Play it whenever you just need to hear the sounds uh, of the Holy Spirit in your ear. I believe that this will be a tremendous blessing to you. So again, you can find the book, the ebook, and the CD on www.johnpaulmcgee.com. Yes, and before ending the show, I always ask the guests to leave either a word of encouragement or some form of inspiration to those who are listening, again, viewing on Facebook. So what do you want to leave um, the viewers and the listeners with tonight? I want to leave the viewers and the listeners tonight uh, with a very short excerpt uh, from the book, and here it is. In Genesis 18, God promised Abraham a son, and Abraham never stopped expecting it, even when faced with his wife's old age. In Daniel chapter 3, the Hebrew boys went into the fiery furnace, expecting to be delivered from the flames. In Luke chapter 1, God promised Mary a virgin that she would birth a son, and with great expectation, she told the angel, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. The question is, what are your expectations? Are you passively meandering through life, wishing the worst won't happen? Or are you confident that no No matter what you face, God's plans and thoughts for you will bring you to your expected victorious end. Today, my brothers and sisters, choose hope, choose faith, and choose expectation. The song is true. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. 
Don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. He's able. With God, if there is no expectation, you will be disappointed. Elevate your expectation. That's the message I'd like to leave with everyone tonight. Expect God to do it. God will do it. Amen. In the back of my head, I had like the, the, the shout screech, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that on here tonight. <laughs> That's not what I want to leave people with. <laughs> That's not what I want to leave. But it was in the back of my head. Like it, I was hitting the notes, like right in the back of my head. I was hitting the notes. <laughs> One of the viewers asked, do you know Johnny Costa? I, I know of John Costa, one of the most amazing pianists to grace this earth. And um, I, I, if he's one of those heroes that you want to be like when you grow up, I'm not there yet, but I absolutely do know of Johnny Costa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you got, you got the musicians. You got, the musicians came out tonight in support. Of wow. Those, um, <laughs> so the musicians came out. Shout out to all the musicians who's viewing on Facebook and who's listening um, this was phenomenal for me, and I and you know it's um, it's easy on my ears because I get a chance to hear a lot of music. Um, you know, not only just being an artist, but also being a um, you know someone who interviews and gets a chance to converse with people on the radio. And it's always music yeah. and lyrics. And so just to be able to hear an instrumental, something that's just yeah. like you said, it is an encounter, and you promised it and you delivered. <laughs> you, oh, wow. you promised you us so it and you delivered and so I can't wait to hear more of this collaboration with your book um, and the CD uh, together and I love that you did it like you said in CD format so people can't see you or they can't focus on you they can't focus on yeah. the theatric so I'm sure um, that this is going to be something really really good for you now I do have one more question before we go alright um, I hope I got one more answer <laughs> you will because I'm going to give you the answer <laughs> I'm going to give you the answer. Before we end every show, we always ask if you feel the power. And I'm giving people, like I'm cheating on the test because people get quiet after a while. So I'm just going to provide the enthusiasm to you, and then you just give it right back to one man gives, another one receives, right? So I'm going to ask you if you can feel the power. I'm going to say it three times. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? And with all of your might, you're going to say, I can feel the power. <laughs> I sound like, like, um, those little ninja thingies that used to come out, Power Rangers. I sound like Power, power Rangers. Rangers. <laughs> I can feel the power. So I'm going to ask that three times, and then you're going to say, I can feel the power. But I do want to say before I go, again, this was an honor. Please go out and get the book. Um, please put the information, if you haven't already, uh, Pastor McGee, um, on the Facebook so that people can start getting um, getting that in, so into what he's doing. You're going to be in Baltimore soon. Are you traveling with the book signing and all that? Do you book signing? Yes. Okay. Yes, can you give yes. us that information as well? Um, we will post that on my website as soon as we finalize the exactly. venue. Okay. We are looking for a signing, I believe, Sunday the 15th, but we're looking for something on September the 14th, which is that Saturday. So stay tuned. Check out my website. Uh, make it one of your favorites. So you go there all the time looking for my next appearance. But it's going to be www.johnpaulmcgee.com. Check it out for our upcoming dates. All right. And we're here. You're here in Atlanta. I'm here in Georgia as well. So we definitely need oh to connect. So, yes. <laughs> so, Pastor McGee, I have one more question to ask. I'm ready. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? I feel the power. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, family, he felt the power. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Late Night with Jerry Love Worldwide and Shay Sammy right here on Positive Power Double XI Christian Media right here out in the beautiful Maryland, Owings Mills, Maryland. You got to check out the doctor when he comes to town. He'll be here real soon. He said, I think he really, I believe he said September 15th. Let me make sure we post that for you guys. Well, you living in Maryland, want to check him out. Beautiful show. Great job. 
great job, Shay Sammy. And we're gonna shout out to Lakeisha Mosley and and Serena Reed. That's right. They did a great job earlier today, starting at eight o'clock right here on Positive Power Triple Podcast. That's right, Triple Night Podcast. Right here on Positive Power. All right, y'all don't forget to tune in Tuesday. That's right. Starting at 9 o'clock, we got Pass the Town with Dr. Paul Kelly. And then we got Shalonda. That's right. Inspirational Treasure will be here for two hours. That's right. So check them out. Then we're going to get a little bit of Clarita Hatton. That's right. Jackson will be following them. So we got the triple podcast on Tuesday night. All right. And if you miss all that, y'all, you can always go out to Spotify Podcast and find all of these beautiful podcasts. That's right, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Google Play. That's right, I know a lot of you like Google Play. I noticed that. So anyway, y'all, y'all have a great night. We appreciate you guys. Batman's heading to the gym, too. That's right, Gym Rat, baby. Gym Rat. Take care, everybody. Have a super, super night. We love you right here on Positive Power. Double X Side, Christian Media. Feel the power. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21, Jerry Ross Live, Worldwide. You are listening to Jerry Ross Live, Worldwide Podcast.